You know, but today we're going to talk about Christmas. And how many of us know that Christmas is all about Jesus? You know, it's about God sending his son. It's about God sending his Messiah into the world. You know, the Bible says, for today is in the city of David, a Savior has been, has been born to you who is Christ the Lord. And also another scripture says that the Lord, that she will bring for a son, and you should call him his name Jesus, for he will save his people from his sins. Come on, somebody. That's some great news. You know, and Christmas is about Jesus. In this season, we're celebrating Jesus Christ. In this season, we're celebrating Jesus' birthday. How many of us know that we're celebrating Jesus' birthday? You know, and there's so many people that are preparing to celebrate Jesus' birthday, but without Jesus being in the room. Hello. I mean, can you imagine just for a moment, people throwing a party for your birthday. People preparing the lights, the cake, the gifts, everything is set up. There is your birthday, but they, you didn't get invited for your birthday. How many of us know that in our time today, there is a lot of people celebrating Christmas, but Jesus is not present in the room. See, to that thing, it's important to understand that Christmas is all about Jesus. Jesus is not the center of Christmas in many people's Christmas today. You know, Jesus is the reason for the season. Christmas is about God sending his son. It's about God sending his Messiah into the world. See, there is a lot of events recorded in the scriptures about the coming of Christ. You know, the Jesus story is the most familiar story in the world. You know that today in this month of December, there is thousands of preachings, thousands of teachings, thousands of people preaching about the story of Jesus Christ when he was born. There is going to be times in Christmas when the parents are going to open the Bible and they're going to share the story about when Jesus was born. There is going to be many people. And you know that this story is one of the most familiar stories around the world. The Bible says that the word became flesh. And made his dwellings among us. You know, there is a lot of different um, scenarios, a lot of different events recorded in the scriptures about the coming of Jesus. We see in the Bible when the first time when God appeared, announced his coming of Jesus in Jerusalem to Zechariah when he was in the temple in Luke chapter 1 verse 13, that he came to Zechariah and he said, you're going to have a son at old age and your son is going to be the one who will prepare the way for Jesus Christ. There was another visit of an angel Gabriel now going to Virgin Mary in Nazareth in Luke chapter 1 31, announcing to her that she was being chosen to be the mother of God's son. I mean, what a marvelous experience and responsibility was going to be for Mary. But it was another visit of another angel in a dream to Brother Joseph. In Matthew chapter 1 verse 20. To get him on board of what God was going to do. And for him to be willing to take Mary as his wife to become the father of God's son. You know there is a lot of different things. It's scripture that tells us. That, that Jesus was going to be born. That Jesus was going to come. But you know, a lot of times we can lose focus in what Christmas is all about. We can lose focus about everything that is taking place. And we prepare the music. We prepare the lightings. We set up the tree. And we put up the, the star on top of the tree. And we have invitations. We bring people to our house. But we forget that it's all about Jesus. That Christmas is a time where we can come together and do self-evaluation of our personal lives and see if Jesus is the center in your life. There was many recordings. There was another one when, when Mary took a trip to, to a village outside Jerusalem in Luke chapter 1 verse 41. Where Mary stayed there for a time with her relative Elizabeth. See, Elizabeth was pregnant, the Bible says, with John. And the announcement by the unborn John that someone special was coming into the house. And the Bible says that John, he lived inside Elizabeth's womb. She was excited that Jesus was in the room. It was
use that affirmation for Elizabeth about the privilege that Mary had to be the mother of Jesus. And the beautiful song of praise that Mary sung in Psalms. And we get to the last stop before Jesus is born. And if you can turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. Christmas is all about Jesus. You know, the Bible says in Luke chapter 1 to 7, the Bible says this. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place where Quirinius was governor, governing Syria. For all went to register everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up to Galilee out of the city of Nazareth in Judah. In Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was in the house in the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his wife, who was with child. So it was what it was was that while they were there, that days were completed for her to be delivered, for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in shattering clothes and laid him. In the manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. I mean, if you read this portion of scripture, it seems like the, you know, Luke was writing the story about Jesus and, and, and the coming of Jesus into the world. And he was highlighting some of the words that we want to talk about here today. Some of the words that he was highlighting that there was no room for Jesus in the inn. Those words not only point out the situation where Mary and Joseph found themselves as they looked for a place to give birth to Jesus. But those words also describe the life of Jesus as he lived here on earth for 30 years. Jesus began his life being on earth, being crowded out. There was no room for Jesus to be born. There was no room for him in the end. And Jesus lived his life in a situation when he was crowded out. There was no room for him in the inn. But also there is no room for him in his hometown. There was no room for him in Israel. There was no room for him in Bethlehem. There was no room for him in Jerusalem. There was no room for him in many people in those times. But I can say that there is not a lot of room for Jesus in our times today. But I believe that there is some people here this afternoon in our church that no matter how things get, no matter how things look, we want to make room for Jesus in our lives. It doesn't matter how busy we are. It doesn't matter how problems come our way. We understand that Jesus is the reason for this season, that without Jesus we can do nothing in our lives. Right here in opening scripture, we find that Joseph and Mary are in a small town of Bethlehem trying to find a place where where Mary can give birth to Jesus. But the houses in Bethlehem, they were overpacked due to the fact that all these people were coming from different cities. It was a decree that every single person needed to come to the original city where they were born. So all these people, they were packing their stuff and they were taking this trip to to, to Bethlehem. So Mary and Joseph, they're they're walking and they get into the city of Bethlehem looking for a room for Jesus. They're knocking at different places and there is no room for him. And look, I was thinking about it. I was like, man, poor innkeeper. I mean, this guy, it was not his fault that the rooms were packed out. Mary and Joseph, they came late. If they would have just get up early and take this trip, probably they would have catch a room. The innkeeper, see, he was busy. He was occupied. He had a lot of different things going on. Hundreds and thousands of people were coming to Bethlehem looking for a room because they needed to be in that city to register. I mean, these people, you know, they they were coming. And and, and, and in one night, all of a sudden, you see Joseph and Mary coming. Mary riding on a donkey, getting to Bethlehem. It was dark. Everything was off. The lights, the candles in the houses, they've been turned off. And the innkeeper probably is in bed already. And he heard the knocking at his door. 
Probably he was tired asking his wife, baby, can you go check who's knocking at the door? It's already late and there is no more room for no one to come into this room. All of a sudden, he got up tired. He's knocking, calling and checking who's knocking at the door. And all of a sudden, he saw Mary and Joseph. He's like, oh, what, what, what do you guys need? There is no more room in the inn no more. There is no more room. If you guys would have came earlier, did you guys make an appointment? Did you guys book your room? There was no more room for Joseph and Mary and for Jesus to be born in the hotel. All of a sudden, as they were talking, they saw a little lamp walking to their stables. All of a sudden, the, the innkeeper said, listen, Joseph and Mary, I don't have room in the hotel. I don't have room in this place. But what I do have is a little stable over there. You see, the lamp is heading to the stable. You guys can stay there. You guys can raise. And I believe there is a lot of people here today. Sometimes there is no room in their lives because they're so busy. But they don't mind giving Jesus the leftovers, a little room on the side. And I was there, as they were there in the room talking to the innkeeper, they looked to the right and they see the lamb walking towards the stables where the animals are kept. So it was there with Mary and Joseph at allowed to rest for the night. And it was there in the midst of the night that the baby Jesus, the baby cries, his first cry, and Jesus is born. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse 6 and 7, the Bible says, so it was... That while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her first, first son and wrapped him in shit and clothes and laid him in the manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Jesus was born in the manger because there was no room for him in the inn. I mean, this hotel probably is the most famous hotel in history. Not because what happened there. But because of what didn't happen in that hotel. Because what could have happened in that hotel. I don't know about you here this afternoon. But I want my Christmas to be a time when I can reflect in my life. And I can look at my life and say, God, do I make room for you in my life? I don't want to be one of those people that regret and live their lives with regret. Saying, what if, what if, what if I would have made room for Jesus in my life? What if I would have made Jesus number one center in my life? He would have stepped in. He would have moved in my life. He would have moved in my situation, in my family, in my children. God would have done some things in my life. See, but we're talking about this hotel. It's one of the most famous hotels in history. It's not Holiday Inn. It's not the Marriott. But it's this one right here in Bethlehem Inn. And it becomes this inn becomes a continuous symbol of what's going on in so many lives today. When there is no room for Jesus in many lives today, just the same way there was no room for Jesus in, the, in his hometown there was no room for Jesus in Israel. There was no room for Jesus in Jerusalem. There was no room for Jesus in the end. Also, we see that there is no room for Jesus in many people's lives today. When there is no room for Jesus to be part of their lives. They don't want to see Jesus to be able to come and begin to interrupt their lives. Jesus came to earth so he can spend an eternity with us. You know that Jesus made room for us in heaven? Jesus made room for us in heaven. The Bible says that my father's house are many mansions. If they were not so, I would have not told you. I have to go prepare a place for you. I'm going to make room for you in heaven. I'm going to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you to myself. It's said that he made room for us, but we cannot make room for Jesus. Listen, today... I want to talk to you about some of the people in the Bible that didn't have room for Jesus. They missed Jesus in Christmas. Number one, 
the first person that didn't make room for Jesus in Christmas, it was the innkeeper. See, the innkeeper didn't have room for Joseph and Mary and Jesus. There was no room for Jesus in the inn. There was no simply room in the inn. There was no space for Jesus. I mean, every space was filled. Every room was booked. Those arrived early, they were already settling in. And there was no simply room for Jesus because every space was occupied. I was thinking about the innkeeper. I think we can give some credit to the innkeeper. He was trying to do his job. People were coming. He was busy man. I mean, especially this particular night. He was busier than every night before. He was a business owner. He was a business. He had a business to run. Thousands of people are coming to the city. And they probably booked the rooms in advance. I don't think he did it intentional. I'm not wanting to give intention of not wanting to give a room for Joseph and Mary. He didn't have no rooms left. There was no space for them in the inn. He was running the hotel and all these rooms were already taken. I mean, the other people came early. They got there first. There was no room for Joseph and Mary in the inn. I believe that in that time, the innkeeper was probably stressed out. He had a long day, serving many travelers, all the guests that were coming, knocking at his door, asking for room. It was a crazy day. It was a busy day for this man. And there was nothing that he could have done for Joseph and Mary. Joseph and Mary, Jesus, they could, he could have done nothing possible for them. And the thing is familiar with so many people today. The reason that there is no room for Jesus in many people's lives today is because everything is occupied. Everything is busy. People are busy. People are occupied. They're so busy they don't have room for Jesus. I mean, this is familiar things. And all the obligations that we have as uh, fathers and as mothers and Family, all this family thing and all these things that go with being a fa- being, having a family and you have a job and you need to provide for your children. You need to provide for yourself and you have to work. You got to, you know, you got to take care of business at home. And sometimes there's problems that come our way, situations that we got to think about. Our mind takes everything to figure out things out. Our lives are run by the busy schedule that we have in life. We get so busy to occupy doing different things that everything else takes Jesus' space and we don't have room for Jesus in our busy life. You know, the, the end keeper, it probably if he was here today and he were hearing about what we're saying about him, I believe that he probably would have stood to his feet and he would shout it, I would have done what you, has, what you guys will have done. Every moment of our lives, every idea in our minds, every space that we have is filled with something. And we get so busy, we get so occupied that there is no room for Jesus. We get busy with a lot of things and there is no room for Jesus in our life. There is no room. My question to you today, do you have room for Jesus in your life? Do you have room for Jesus in your busy life? I know we have responsibilities. I know we have a family. But you know that in Jesus' birth, there was more animals than people. Maybe if the innkeeper was here today, sitting in the crowd, hearing about what we're saying about him. About what he did with when Joseph and Mary came and knocking at his door. He probably would have stand up in his feet and shouted, I only did what you would have done. My God. The innkeeper probably would have said, listen, when Joseph and Mary and Jesus came to Bethlehem knocking at my door, I didn't turn Jesus away. I didn't turn them away. I didn't leave them in the cold. But I just did. But just like you, I only give whatever I had left. My God, you know, that's a lot of, I think in, in, in our time today, 
But sometimes we get so busy with life that sometimes we only give Jesus whatever's left. We only get on our knees when things get hard. You know, Jesus needed to bring some right, some problems, some things happen in your life so you can come to the feet of Jesus, so you can spend time with Jesus. It doesn't have to be like that. Jesus wants to have a fellowship with us. He wants to spend time with us. He wants to show you his ways. He wants to give you plans for your life. He wants to give you direction for your life. But sometimes what happens is that we're too busy. We don't have room for him on our busy schedule. And because he loves you so much that he's going to do everything possible to draw you to him and to spend time with him. So sometimes there are situations in our lives that will bring us to the feet of Jesus. Sometimes something happens when you come into the house of God, when you're dealing with heavy things in your life, when you're dealing with a lot of things. You come into the house of God and you're broken. It's, it hits different when we're facing some things in our lives. It's like the presence of God. Worship begins to sing and all of a sudden you're broken just in the presence of God. We got to make room for Jesus in our busy schedule. See, the innkeeper gave Jesus his leftovers. And so many people, that's what they do. My question to you, what takes your time? What is taking your attention? What takes your focus? Family, work, the school, money, responsibilities. What takes priority in your life that you give Jesus leftovers? I think this Christmas is a good time to do a self-evaluation on how much space you have in your life for Jesus. Let's make room for Jesus. You know, the second person that didn't make room for Jesus in Christmas, it was King Herod. I hope I'm pronouncing that guy right, okay? My wife was teaching me, like, no, no, not Herod, it's Herod. Come on, somebody. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 and 3, the Bible says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, Behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For, he has, for we have seen his star in the east and had come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. You know, King Herod didn't make room for Jesus. When King Herod heard that the wise men were asking, where is he who was born king of the Jews? You know, King Herod was tripping out. You know that King Herod, King Herod he was the king, of, the king of the Jews? So what happens when this, this wise man, and another translation says that it's, it's Maja, Maj, you know, Maja. So, you know, this, this, this word Maja... It, a lot of times, when in Mexico, we call it the Santo Reyes. But really, they were not kings. They were, they were some kind of magicians. But in those times, in the, in the reign of Persia, the strongest army in those times, there were the people, they were the army, the strongest army of those times, Persia. And they had a like, kind of like Levitical priests, but it was priests for this kind of um, empire. These guys, they were the ones who, who selected the new judges, they set up judges. They were the ones who even raised up new kings for, the, for, the, um, for Persia. So what happens when they were king makers, so they were the ones who studied the stars. And they would be able to look at the stars and say what direction Persia empire was going to go, what moves they were going to make. But you know that this is the first time that the, 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 this wise man, they were able to look at the stars and the stars that revealed to them that there was a new king. These people, they were not believers. You know, but the Bible says in Daniel that Daniel was placed over this group of, of, of magas or, or wise men. So Joe, Daniel, I believe, Daniel was talking to these people about God. See, when Daniel was in those times, Daniel was the man of God. 
See, Daniel never broke faith with God. He stayed committed to God. He was thrown into the lion's den. And you know what happened in the lion's den? The people in that city that were saying, I know that your God is going to deliver you. See, David made an impact in this man's lives. So through history, that, that story of a God, about the prophecies that one day one new king was going to come and be born. These people eventually, when they saw the stars, they took a trip. And you know that this man, I mean, I'm getting ahead of the story, but this man, when they took the trip, it was not a day. A lot of times we look at the little story about Jesus and, and, the, and the wise man when he was a baby in the, man, in the manger. But you know that this man, it took them almost two years to get to Jesus. It didn't took them a day. Jesus was already two years old. Almost two years old when they came to present Jesus with presents and to worship him. But King Harold, he was troubled when he was seeing what happened and they were looking for a new king. King Harold said, what, what do you mean? What are you talking about? King who? I'm the only king over here. See, King Harold, like many of us, we don't have room for two kings in our lives. King Harold said, no, 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 no. I'm the only king over here. I, I, don't, I don't have room in my palace for another king. I'm the only king. I was named king in this nation. I was a king for this. Nobody's going to take my place. There's only room for my king, for this king in this throne. The king Harold didn't, want, didn't have room for two kings. He wanted to be the only king of his life. He wanted to be the only king in Israel. He wanted to be the only king. And there is many people that don't make room for Jesus in their lives. Why? Because there is no room for two kings in their lives. My God. No, no, everything is about me. I'm going to do what I want to do. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. They don't mind if Jesus is in the sanctuary as long as he's not in the throne. We come to worship in the sanctuary and we get excited. We get inspired. We want to take the word for God. But the longest God begins to touch some areas in your life, you cannot do this. You cannot do that. You got to stop doing this. All of a sudden, wait a minute, Jesus. It's cool that you are in the house, but you cannot take the throne of my life. See, King Harold didn't have room for two kings. Many people today, Jesus cannot able to, to be the master of the lives of the king of their lives because there is no room for two kings. They have plans, they have direction, they have goals, the things they gotta do, but sometimes they're not in line with what God has in store for your life. So what happens is that you close up and there is no room for Jesus in the throne of my life. It's okay, I can come and worship it. It's okay, I can come and, and do all these different things, but but I, Jesus cannot come in the room of my heart. King Harold said, no, 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 I, I, we, we're not going to do that here. See, I, I'm the only king. And you know what happened? The Bible says that King Harold got trouble. He was worried. He was worried. He started tripping out. And you know what happened? Christmas, we talk about Christmas, a beautiful celebration. But you know, in those days, they were killing children. They were killing children. Every kid in the eight, younger than two years old, they were supposed to be slaughtered. There was, he started tripping. Another king, another king, another king. No, that's not going to happen. I'm going to do some things for that not to happen. And instead of things getting worse, getting better, what happens? They got worse for King Harold. You know, there's a reason sometimes crisis and we experience different things in our lives. It's because sometimes you don't have, you don't make room for Jesus in your life. Sometimes when God begins to touch some areas in your life, begins to make, you know, show you some areas that you need to make changes. All of a sudden, God reminds you, points some things in your life and you get trouble. Instead of making moves, you get, in, you get trouble. 
You're like, man, how? No, no, but I, if I do that, this has to change. If I do that, then things are not going to happen the way that I thought was going to happen. And all of a sudden, you begin to get trouble because, man, how am I going to fix this? How am I going to do that? I want this way. God will tell me to do this way. And all of a sudden, things happen in your life and crisis and problems, situations come your way so you can be in line with the perfect will of God. That's what happened with King Harold. And Harold said, no, Harold, Harold didn't want no one to be competing for his throne. And sometimes we don't make room for Jesus in our lives because we don't want Jesus to interfere with our lives, with our money, with our work, with our plans. Come on, somebody. So today in Christmas, we set up lights and we have all these different things. But really, Christmas was a time where a lot of things were taking place when Jesus was born. See, when Jesus shows up in our lives and he demands to be king and he's rejected, there's going to be trouble. Hello. See, see, when Jesus comes into your life and he demands to be king of your life, and if Jesus is rejected, there's going to be some trouble. Come on, somebody. Harold didn't want competition. The Bible says that Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. The Bible says that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And those in heaven and those on earth, that those under earth and those in the, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus is in charge. Jesus is the king. And Christmas is all about the king. And then the third person, and I'm going to be closing with this. I hope that this message is provoking. I pray that it will help you to really do it a self-evaluation in the season of Christmas. You know, because it's about making room for Jesus. It's about Jesus being the center. I believe that there are seasons for us to be able to evaluate what's going on in our lives and how our lives are according to the will of God. The third people... That they missed Jesus in Christmas. It was Joseph and Mary. Say what? See in Luke chapter 2 verse 41, 46, the Bible says this. That his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days, as they returned, the boy Jesus... Linger behind, the, behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother didn't know it. By supposing him to, be, to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and, and looked for him among the relatives and his friends. So when they did not find Jesus, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now so it was after three days, my God, three days. Come on, parents, have you left your children behind for some? The Bible says they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. You know, Jesus went with his parents to celebrate the Passover, which was a, rel a religious celebration. Technically, the Passover was all about Jesus. Jesus is the Passover lamb. But you know what happened with the parents? They lost Jesus in the middle of the celebration. I mean, they lost Jesus. Can you imagine Jesus? They forgot about Jesus. You know what happens in Christmas? Sometimes we can lose, we can lose, we can lose Jesus in Christmas. I mean, we think about everything else. We think about everything else. See, when talking about Joseph and Mary, they, they forgot about Jesus. They didn't break relationship with Jesus. Even though Jesus was not present with them for three days, they, Mary was still the mother of Jesus. Joseph was still the father of Jesus. But they broke fellowship with Christ. You know, there is a lot of times with us that we have a relationship with God. You're saved. You come to the house and we worship God. 
But sometimes we can go out without Jesus. We can go out without fellowship with Christ. See, Jesus, Joseph and Mary, they were still their parents. But they broke relationship, I mean, fellowship with God. You know, there's one thing to be in a relationship and to have fellowship. I mean, you can be in the same house and not talk to your wife. Hello. You're still married. doesn't mean you're not married. You're still married. You're just mad. You're not talking to her. Hello. That's what happened. You know, sometimes we can get so familiar with the spiritual matters. We can get so familiar with the spiritual matters, man. We can come into the house of God and we can do all these different things that we do. And we think that we are, man, God, you know, I love Jesus. And I know you love Jesus, but what about spending time with Jesus? What about spending time in his feet of Jesus? What about you're spending time and in fellowship with Christ? It's one thing about being saved, but God doesn't just want you to be saved, but he wants to take you from glory to glory, from level to level. He wants you to grow your salvation. He wants to show you his ways. He wants to show you what he has in store for your family. But it's not going to be if you don't spend time with Jesus. If you don't spend time in fellowship with Christ. See, Joseph and Mary, they would keep going. They knew they had a son. They knew Jesus. I mean, Jesus was their son. Sometimes we can go daily like that. Hey, I'm safe. Are you, I mean, you a Christian? Yes, I'm a Christian. I'm talking about I'm a Christian, man. I, I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God. God loves me. I love God. Yes, you do. But how many times, how long has it been that you haven't spent time with Jesus? How long? You, you, you come to Sunday to church. But are you fellowshipping with Christ? I think it's important. You know, I, I'm, I'm trying to provoke you here this afternoon. You know, because I feel that sometimes there are seasons where we can do some reflection about our lives. There are some seasons in our times where we can do some reflections of how much room we have for Jesus in our hearts. There are times that we can go and get familiar with everything. We can get so busy. You know, if you can stand with me here this afternoon. It is possible to be in relationship with Jesus by not being in fellowship with Jesus. Not being intimate with Jesus. Not, not, not spending time with Jesus. See, the thing is that we can get familiar with the spiritual matters. We can hear songs about Christmas. But they don't move us to want to spend time with Jesus. We can hear what Jesus did for us. But it doesn't move us to spend time with Jesus. We can come to church and we can do ministry. We can serve people. But what about fellowship with Christ? You know, the people who least expected to lose fellowship with Jesus, they lost it. And there was Joseph and Mary. Some powerful men in the Bible, they lost close fellowship with Christ. Noah lost it. David lost it for a season in his life. Samson lost it for a season in his life. Peter, Peter, he lost fellowship with Jesus for a season in his life. And you know that you and I, we can lose it too. It is possible that in this season, this season would not do nothing to us. But it can just be like another season, another Christmas. Christmas is about Jesus. It is possible to get caught up with all the do's of Christmas, the lies, the decorations, the gifts, the parties, the food, the familiar, with all those things. And we can get distracted and lose our fellowship with Christ. You know, we've seen people here today that didn't make room for Jesus. But my question to you, do you have room for Jesus in your heart? Do you have room for Jesus in your busy life? See, the Bible says that the wise men, the magis, they made room for Jesus. They knew that Jesus was worth the journey. That Jesus was worth the journey. You know, these men, they were men of power. The Magus, the, the wise men, they were men of power. They had a reputation in Persia. 
They had reputation. This man, they were selected judges and they would raise up judges. They would put them in government and they would raise up kings. And they were the ones who make kings. And, and they would establish kings in different nations. They had heavy responsibilities. They were busy men. They were busy. They, they, they knew they had room for kings. They would raise up kings to reign in different places. These people, they understood that in order for a nation to be wealthy and strong, they needed a king. You know, the Bible says that this man, they took the journey, a long journey. Imagine a long journey, two, almost two years. The Bible says that when the, the, the magi, the wise men, they got to the house, they said that the Jesus was a child. See, Jesus was born in a manger. But two years after they got to Jesus, can you imagine how long it took for them to get to Jesus? But they didn't stop. Deserts didn't stop them. Challenges didn't stop them. Problems didn't stop them. They kept going and they kept going and they kept going. They couldn't stop because they said their journey to Jesus and nothing was going to stop them until they get to Jesus. Deserts, they cross deserts, they cross oceans to get to Jesus. You know, this man. Not only they wanted to see Jesus, but the Bible says that they wanted to see him to worship Jesus. You know, it's the first time in history that this man, Magus, the wise man, they bowed down to worship a king. This is the first time recorded in the books of history that this Magus, they would raise up kings and they would sit next to them. But it was the only time when they looked for Jesus, a new king, and they bowed down to worship him. And not only to worship him, but the Bible says they brought gifts, valuable gifts to Jesus. This meant they were determined. That they would not want to just be in the presence of a king. But they wanted to worship a king. Not only they wanted to worship a king, but they wanted to give their best to the king. You know, the journey to Christ... And for Jesus to be at the center of our lives, it has to be a journey. It has to be a big deal. It has to be a big deal. It was a big deal for this wise man. It was a big deal. It was a big deal. They knew that they were going to follow a star and they were going to see hopefully they would make it there. It was a big deal. I mean, two years of journey. It was a big deal to leave their jobs behind, to leave everything behind. They made a big deal. I feel like today we need to make it a big deal. We need to make it a big deal, man, for Jesus to be the center of our lives. It has to be a big deal in your life. It has to be a big deal. It doesn't matter the problems that come your way. It doesn't matter the disasters that you had to cross. It doesn't matter the things that you had to face. You got to look at Jesus and you got to say, I'm going to get to you. I'm going to spend time with you. I'm not going to allow situations to pull me away from you. I'm not going to allow my business schedule to take room that belongs to you. I'm not going to allow my plans, the things that I want to do. To take you out of my life. You're the king of my life, God. You're the king of my life. There is room for you in my life. There is room for you, Jesus, in my life. In my business schedule, you're going to be priority. Because I know that whatever I do without you, I can accomplish. I will not have success. That whatever I build, unless you build a house, God, I'm going to build in vain. Whatever I put my hands, if I work with my family and I try to do it without Jesus, things are not going to get better. I try to fix my situations without Jesus being the center of my life. Things are not going to get better. It will be a temporary fix, but all of a sudden something, hell is going to break loose again. Jesus has to be center in your life. See, they made a big deal. The wise man, they made a big deal. They made a big deal. Is it a big deal for you? Is it a big deal? You know, the wise man, they made a big deal. They said, man, oh, I'm going to do what I got to do. 
See, the Bible says that they were not three. It doesn't say how many there were. It was maybe one, maybe one carried three gifts. We don't know how many were there. But one thing we know for sure that it was a big deal for this man to make the journey from the east all the way to get to Jesus. And you know what happened after they worshiped Jesus and they presented the gifts? This wise man, the Magi, then he went back to the east. The Bible says that they took a different direction. Oh, man. Hey, something happens. Something happens when you're in the presence of a king. Something happens when you come to Jesus and you make it a big deal. Sometimes you go in this direction and you think you're going the right direction. But all of a sudden you have an encounter with Jesus. All of a sudden you get touched by Jesus. All of a sudden you experience the move of God in your life. And you will never return back where you came from. Guys, it's going to be a new direction for your life. God, because the plans of God are bigger than your plans. Your biggest plans are so little compared to God's plans. God has bigger plans for our lives. That's the beautiful thing. When you make a big deal about being able to make room for Jesus in your life. It has to be a big deal, church. Is it a big deal for you? A big deal. It's a big deal. You know, you got to make it a big deal about Jesus. Because the blood is still has power. The blood of Jesus it still has healing power. The blood of Jesus it still has saving power. The blood of Jesus it still has delivering power. The blood of Jesus it still has victory power. The blood of Jesus it still has freedom power. The blood of Jesus, the power that help you to overcome any worst situation in your life. The blood of Jesus has power. And it has to be a big deal for you and I. It has to be a big deal. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Whatever situation you might be going through, I want to let you know that you just got to take the journey daily to Jesus. That he, the Bible says that Moses said, man, God, I want to be your presence. He valued God's presence because he said, man, God, show me your ways. You got to spend time with Jesus to know God's ways for your life. Sometimes we walk in life without direction, without heavenly direction. We walk around with just direction from someone or this person or that person. What about direction from God? Listen, God already did the first thing in our lives. He took you out and positioned you in a place where you could take the journey to Jesus. He took the hardest thing out of your way. He took the bigger problem that, couldn't, that you couldn't get out of. He took to remove the biggest mountain that you couldn't see the other side. He already did some things in your life. He put some shoes on your feet. He put some strength in your bones. He put air in your lungs. He gave you sight. You can hear. Our thing is that we just got to walk. You got to walk. You got to walk and you got to spend time with Jesus. Listen, I pray that this Christmas, we will not get out of this season of Christmas the same way that we walked in. I pray that Jesus will be the center, that when you see the lies, that you remember that the light gave direction to the wise men to get to Jesus. That the light will remind you that there is direction for your life. That the spheres and the lights and the tree will remind you that Christmas is all about Jesus.